Robert Stevens, a 63-year-old photo editor from Boca Raton, Florida, died from inhalation anthrax. Mr. Stevens was an employee of tabloid publisher American Media Incorporated. With the discovery of anthrax spores in his workspace, the county health department quarantined the building and AMI workers were tested for anthrax. The FBI took control of the property and along with the Center for Disease Control, or CDC, began an investigation that revealed anthrax had probably entered the building via mail addressed to Mr. Stevens. With the collection of criminal evidence complete, US EPA Region 4 was requested to assist in a comprehensive sampling program to determine the extent of contamination, which would help determine an eventual decontamination plan for the 68,000 square foot building. Fortunately, we were able to still deal with this like we do all emergencies that are outlined in the National Contingency Plan. You still have to do site assessment, you still have to do sampling, and then you still have to take that data and determine your cleanup options. In this case, we, we're dealing with a bio instead of the, a chemical or an oil. Uh, once we were able to de develop the protocol for this response, things moved along rather routinely. Although the site could be handled in a relatively routine manner, there were some unique aspects to be considered requiring the development of sampling protocols. Well, the, the first unusual thing about the sampling was getting people qualified that could do the sampling. We requested the aid of the civil support team out of Florida and the Gulf Strike team out of Mobile, and we trained them in how to take bio samples. The EPA's environmental response team provided training on sampling procedures to the state and federal responders. U.S. Coast Guard Gulf Strike Team has a long history of assisting EPA OSCs on emergency responses. We brought a total of 12 people down on our team. We set up a mobile command post for the uh, FOSC to use for meetings, conferences, and uh, administrative work. We set up the decontamination line. We're going to be performing entries. We have a site safety officer, industrial hygienist, working for the OSC. The strike team also brought in health service technicians to perform blood sampling and medical monitoring. NIOSH, the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, also assisted with the selection of personal protective equipment and the development of sampling equipment, techniques, and plans. Our mission and role here is to provide uh, support to help better characterize the building uh, from an environmental standpoint so we can understand where the contamination is. We're going to be um, collecting air samples, surface samples, and vacuum samples in a number of different techniques to try and characterize the environment. We're going to start in areas where we think may be less contaminated and systematically work towards areas that we know to be contaminated in the hope that we can isolate areas of the building that we can verify as contaminant free. The Agency for Toxic Substance Disease Registry, or ATSDR, was also on site to assess the presence and nature of any health hazards and to help prevent or reduce any further exposure to the public and responders. The health and safety plan called for responders entering the anthrax infected zone to undergo a course of antibiotics for 60 days from their most recent exposure. Results of the 462 swab and air samples collected inside the AMI building revealed trace levels of anthrax at 84 sample locations on the first floor lobby, library, stairs, elevator, and several countertops. That data has now been turned over to the AMI management for them to develop the cleanup options. EPA will continue to provide technical oversight and consultation in order to complete the cleanup at the facility.